today's very exciting topic for Mathematical is the slant height of columns and pyramids. Okay, and I suppose to do this we better draw ourselves one. Let's do a column because that's pretty easy. Um, here's a column. No. Can I change that? Yes, I can. Oh. Oh. Okay. In order to understand slant height, we probably better figure out what slant height is. And really, the words Colton shoot used there are a dead giveaway. This is different than the height of the cone, because if you remember right, any time in math we talk about height of a shape, it is perpendicular to its base. The height of this cone is this little thing that forms a right angle, and would be the number 8, because that's what this is. Okay, this is the height of the shape. But we're not looking for the height, we are looking for the slant height. And just like the slant height says, it is the height of the slanted part. In other words, this, it's the distance from here to here. This is the slant height, the height of the slanted part. I can't think of any other way to say that. Than that. Because that does come into play sometimes when we do that sort of thing. That Kendall. Of cones and pyramids? Yeah, does that say six or eight? Does yes, which one? This one? Six. And what is that thing underneath the slanted Height of slanted part? Whoa. I'll work on my letter. So, when you are asked for the slant height, okay, how do I figure it out there? Okay, usually when they ask for slant height, Alex, you're probably going to have to think, yeah, you're going to have to think Pythagorean theorem. <laughs> In other words, we have, children, you have to try to make a right triangle, which we do have right here. And we know two of the legs. We just need to find the hypotenuse of that. Um, I know that it is 6 from here to here. I know that the, this height from the inside is 8 inches. I need to figure out what this hypotenuse is, because that is its slant height. And we hope, Sam Poppin, we hope that it's Pythagorean triple. If not, then you've got to actually work it out. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. In this case, I've got a 6-8 triangle. Well, there's no 6-8 up there. Right. But if you cut them both in half, you get the, the base triangle of a 3-4 5 triangle. This is not 5 because we cut it in half. We have to re go back and redouble it again. So the slant height would be 10 whatever it is inches. Maybe there is hope for 253. So what's the answer? 10 inches. The answer would be 10 inches. And then there's inches. That's what we can It's the hypotenuse of this triangle. That's the best thing ever. All right, how about this one? Right out of the proverbial book, we've got a pyramid. Oh, material. We've got a little pyramid that looks like this. 
not done yet. A little shading here. This is um, eight inches. This is eight inches, and the book says that it has a height of eight, eight inches. inches. So the slant height, if we're trying to figure that out, it might be a good idea for you to redraw. Okay, you're going to have to think about it like this. You're going to draw a line right down to the middle, and you're going to make this right triangle. We'll kind of think three-dimensionally here. Here's my right triangle that I cut the little piece out of the middle of. You have to make your own. You start at the very dead center of the little square in the bottom, come out to the middle here, and then boom, right there, everybody's happy. And I know those dimensions. I know that this is 8 because it told me it was 8. How? What's the distance from here to here? 4 inches because it goes halfway through. So now my right triangle is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. This time I have a 4 squared plus 8 squared triangle, and I don't believe there is a even reduced a 1, 2. So you're going to have to actually move this one out. 16 plus 64 equals c squared. c squared is going to equal what? 80. 80. Square root of 80. So c equals the square root of 80, which is close to the right answer, but not quite, because you do need to simplify it as much as possible. The square root of 80, let's break it down into, I don't know, square root of 4 times the square root of 20, square root of 4 times the square root of 5. Oh, look, two square roots of 4 give you a normal 4. So 4 times the square root of 5. And you're going to have to think about, you kind of have to visualize cutting that piece out of that thing and being able to see it there. Holly? Where did you get the four and eight? Yeah. Eight was given to me. Height, height, goes perpend uh, height goes perpendicular to the, to the base, and that goes right up to the point. And the four, you know that this is half of the distance that this was. Because it's a pyramid. Well, it just happened to be a few. It happened to be 8 8. If this was 10, then this would have been 5. No, but like the up and down line is not full length. It is full length. From here, you have to, this is three dimensionally drawn. You have to think about that sitting on that. The height will always be perpendicular to the base, and it's going to be full distance let me find one more because I can tell you very excited about it. So excited, love that. Always hashtag so excited. Hashtag loving that. <laughs> Write this one down. This cone. How about this? Here's my cone. I'll let you try this one. This cone has a slant height of 20 inches. Now, this time I gave you the slant height. And it has a radius of 5 inches. Now, this time I want you to find the height of it. Not the slant height, just the normal height. Find the height. This is not that. This is the slant height. So let me give you a little clue here. You are going to have to, well, two ways you could do this, by the way. The best way probably is draw your little, here's your height right here. It forms a right angle with that. There's your right triangle. You could have also done this. 
and drawing the triangle to look like this. Because this is going to be the same 5 that it is down So is it x squared plus b plus b squared? Yeah, squared. 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 So we're missing the b squared? Yes. Or the a squared. It doesn't matter which one you call it. Pythagorean the Pythagorean theorem. You can't do this without the Pythagorean theorem. So if you don't have a squared plus b squared equals c squared written on your paper, don't ask me a question. Or is it 20 squared equals 20 squared? Or is it just 20? 20 squared. Okay. Kendall. Sorry, I can get my glasses. Well, that's a novel thought. Yes. So if you're looking for this, do you have a question? Well, Let's give everybody a chance, Ava. Wait, we have to square root of the You will end up taking the square root of the answer. Did you get it? This is really Why, Rick, you came up with one? I'll let you. Five times the square root of 17. Yes. Five times the square root of 17. I just got three. That's wow. eight. So, that's what I got. five what squared I got. plus you don't know what squared equals 20 squared. 25 plus b squared equals 400. That's okay. That's okay. 20 times 20. Subtract 25 to get it to the other side. B squared is going to equal 375. Got that. B equals the square root of 375. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so 20 times the square root of the square root of 5 times the square root of 75. The square root of 5 times the square root of 15. The square root of 5 times the square root of 3. Did I do something wrong? Because I thought you said the square root of 17. Yeah, I saw for C squared. Alright. So Wait, here, so what's the answer? These normal ones give you a normal 5. These recombine to give you a square root of 15. Oh, so five times three. Should we not go to algebra one? This is really hard. This is as hard as anything. Okay, good.